Hi, I'm Jonathan Bagg. This is a joint effort of Electric Earth Concerts and the Chompy Quartet. Spiritual Voices uh, is a program that was conceived around a fantastic piece by the American composer Ollie Wilson, um, who wrote a piece for a large ensemble. And its middle movement is built around the theme of a city called heaven, which is an American spiritual. Um, all the pieces on the program relate in some way to that theme, uh, either directly to the Wilson or to the American spiritual, which is such a deep part of our national soul. Mark Kuss gives us the bare essentials in his piece, which is the first one on the program. He's taken seven spirituals from a collection that was printed 150 years ago and preserved them uh, verbatim, actually, giving the, the melody to the, to the clarinet. And then around that, he uses his wonderful imagination to create uh, textures and harmonies that make it a really magical collection. And then Ben Johnston's Amazing Grace Quartet um, was written in the 70s. Uh, ben Johnston was a microtonal avant-garde composer. Uh, but in this piece, he let the theme, uh, the, that beautiful church anthem, take over. And it dominates the texture, and it dominates the piece, and infuses it with its own special stark beauty. It's no wonder that it's one of his most popular pieces. Um, and Anthony Kelly, uh, my colleague at Duke and a wonderful composer, uh, who was also a student of Ollie Wilson, will tell us more about his relationship with Wilson and Wilson's piece and his own piece. Um, I just love Anthony's piece, Grist for the Mill, for, the, for its witty take on American blues and jazz. So let's get to it.
It's an honor to be here and to have a chance to listen to the beautiful music of the Electric Earth Concerts. Um, the ensemble that has been put together is extraordinary, so it's been a nice couple of days. Uh, I was asked to speak a little bit about uh, the music that I wrote that, that will be performed, a piece called Grist for the Mill. And I was also asked to speak a little bit about my mentor um, who taught me while I was at University of California, Berkeley. His name is Ollie Wilson. And Professor Wilson, I will refer to him that way because that's what I called him every time I saw him, uh, is, is a preeminent composer and, uh, and uh, uh, one of the greatest orchestrators ever to live. He often would say that music is human experience consciously transformed. And when asked by Bruce Duffy uh, whether or not, um, as an African-American composer, he was always expressing African-American ideas, this is a quote from Ollie Wilson or Professor Wilson. He says, music is experience consciously transformed. And because my experience has been an African-American experience, I think it expresses that. But that is a very, very complicated kind of thing, which is inclusive. It includes a lot of different things, including the full range of human experience at the end of the 20th century living in the United States. Having said that, if you listen to the music on the other side, there may not be discernible aspects of that music that you say, aha, that's clearly African-American tradition. In some instances, in some music, you might be able to discern it, and in other instances, you may not be able to discern it. I would hope that you would be able to discern something that made sense, something that communicated something of the human spirit. To that degree, it's universal. But universal always comes from the particular. So Wilson is, is sort of capturing something that he also passed on to me, which is that whereas his perspective as an African-American composer was important to him, uh, he was also accepting of many, many influences and willing to tap into those influences as he uh, uh, designed sonic experiences for all kinds of audiences. The piece, A City Called Heaven, it's a three movement piece. Uh, uh, he described it as fast, slow, fast, which if you have ever heard any of the sonatas of the classical era, very often that design is included um, in a lot of European uh, music. So having a multi-movement work with those kind of contrasts is uh, really uh, also inclusive of a broader tradition. But what he includes within each movement is where we begin to discern some of those aspects of the more African-American informed and specifically sometimes African informed uh, musical traditions because uh, Professor Wilson also went to Ghana and studied for quite a few years, uh, studied the music of West Africa and wrote articles, uh, really significant landmark articles on um, the, the title of his, one of his main articles is, is the significance of the relationship between West African music and, and Afro-American music. So that was a, a real significant uh, pursuit of his. Um, within the first movement of City Called Heaven, by the way, that title, City Called Heaven, is a quote from an old spiritual um, uh, that uh, is the source material for the middle movement, the more sort of placid movement, which is drawn from a uh, Negro spiritual, and he's trying to evoke that sound. So imagine, you know, a slightly abstracted version of what a spiritual will come out to be. That's what that middle movement is all about. It's flanked by two more lively movements. The first movement is based on what he would often refer to as a blues riff, sort of a, like a lively, um, uh, sort of bouncy rhythm. Uh, informed by something that he often in class would call the pendular third or the minor third, but da da dee da, you know, that's popping up all over. So that's a really bluesy aspect of that first movement, which sort of sets the tone of, of inviting the listener to something that's exciting. And then we find our way to that middle movement, this sort of open space of this reharmonized, unusually 
uh, orchestrated uh, spiritual type experience. And then he sort of closes with a sort of active uh, movement, uh, which is based, he says, on boogie woogie piano. I'll never forget some of the classroom experiences where he would be excited to explain to class how influential Boogie Woogie Piano was, and he would play duets of uh, two of the great um, pioneers of Boogie Woogie, uh, Mead Lux Lewis and Albert Ammons. You know, and those are some, you know, if you want to have something to compare it to, listen to them before or after you listen to A City Called Heaven, and you'll have quite an experience to enjoy. So let me bridge into another three movement work, which is one that I wrote while I was, one of the movements that I wrote in this piece, Grist for the Mill. The middle movement was a specific assignment during my dissertation period in Berkeley. And that assignment was, uh, you're given an orchestration and a week later you have to turn in a completed piece. So you had to just crank it out. And I thought, oh, I better do something that I better feel comfortable with. So what I did was I designed for the middle movement a, a piece based on one of the oldest uh, vernacular forms in, in, in black American music, the 12-bar blues. But I stretched it out and I used the sort of same harmonic progression, but I organized the pitches as if I were doing serial music or 12-tone music. I just used different pitch sets to represent the the tonic and the subdominant and the dominant. And so if you, if you listen to it, you'll be able to hear it go to the, to the dominant as a real climax. And when it gets to that climax, you'll hear this rhythm that Ollie Wilson was the one who taught us such rhythm, this rhythm from Ghana called the, uh, the Eve rhythm uh, the, from the Eve tribe in, in, in Ghana. It sounds like, I don't know how that's gonna come off on the mic, but <laughs> that's how it sounds. And so, um, that's going to be the climax of the middle movement, which is a 12 bar blues. This movement, this sort of hearty blues movement, which is based on sort of like a guitar strumming player singing like freely over the guitar strumming. You'll hear some of those rhythms happen. That movement is flanked by two sort of, uh, I would call invitational movements. Each movement has a title that's based on a part from the Eno River Mill, because I used to visit that, uh, River Mill um, often. And, um, you know, titles like Brand Shaker and Wolf Gyrator, those are actually mechanical parts of this mill that smells like dust and water and, and, and corn grain and all. It's, it's such an interesting experience. So it's the mix of the organic and the mechanical and, you know, the human and the, the machine and all of that's happening. So you hear very mechanical things in the first movement, like the flute, don't dick it, don't dick it. You know, this thing, it kind of sets the tone. And then all of these kind of like little ragtime tunes and little sort of ditties happen on top of that. And that's all what the first movement is all about, is that sort of invitational sort of, you know, uh, melodic over a mechanical experience. After we go through the move, middle movement, that blues, we go to the third movement, which I consider my big sort of, you know, let's just have a good time. Last movement, let's have some fun. And I based it on a, a principle called breaks, which just means that like an ensemble moves towards a moment and then a big sort of open break happens and someone solos over it or a couple of duets happen over it. So you have this really beautiful solo that will happen in the middle uh, of, of that as well from the flute. Um, and then you'll, you'll hear a little improvisation that I've left space for the players to try near the end of the piece. So those are the works that you're gonna hear and I hope you enjoy them. I am so honored to be a part of this. So thank you for listening.
Thank <laughs> you. 